This week on TGC News, HK goes long, FK Bruno reloads, and a gun channel ranking you might not expect. Keltec offers some of the most interesting and innovative firearms in recent memory. Whether you're into bullpup rifles like the RDB or RFB, or maybe the KSG bullpup shotgun in short or gigantic configuration. Or maybe you just want to plink around with some pistol caliber stuff like the Sub 2000 or PF9. They make something affordable for everyone. To learn more, check out KeltecWeapons.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get started this week, I need to talk about something that sucks a lot. Last week, the gun industry suffered a big loss. David Famiglietti, the man who led the charge at New Frontier Armory, passed away. I don't tell you this to make you feel bad. I'm telling you about Dave because not only was he an actual personal friend of mine, but he was one of the most well-respected people in the gun industry and for a lot of folks was the source of a lot of positives in their career. He was a good friend and a supporter of TGC since day one. Dave, we're gonna miss you, buddy. Rest easy. Now, how about some news? HK, even though they hate you, have come out with something new in the VP9 lineup. Now, based on the markings on the side, I suspect we will see this as a full gun later this year. But for now, we have the VP9 long slide kit. It's basically a complete new upper for any VP9 that is already out there. It has competition style sights, fiber up front, adjustments in the rear, as well as a uh, Hey, are you sure that's not a Walther design when it comes to slide cuts on the front? And then, of course, an extended 5-inch barrel using HK's O-ring lockup. I find it interesting that we're seeing the upper for sale separately from the gun before we see a complete long slide gun here in the U.S. MSRP on that lands at $449, which means you'd be looking at around $1,100 if you got your pistol for a solid price. In other pistol news, FK Bruno, the company that brought the 7.5 Field Pistol, or as some of you know it, the holy crap, I can't believe that thing cost $7,500 pistol, has expanded their lineup with the new PSD pistol. This new one has a polymer frame and is set up as a multi-caliber platform. It will not only be chambered in the 7.5 FK, which they claim has the same power as a 44 mag, but there will also be kits to swap over to both 9mm with 17 round mags and 10mm with 16 round mags at launch. The things that stand out to me on this new model, besides the polymer frame, are the shorter 5.3 inch barrel, the standard optic cut on top of the slide, and the magwell, which allows for rapid attachment of the folding stock. Word is that they are working on a brace for US markets. On the surface, this seems like an awesome follow up to the field pistol. I spoke with Rob Pincus, who has been involved with FK Bruno since the onset about the PSD on the concerns of pricing. He said the gun will be right at $2,000 and will come with both the 7.5 and 9mm barrels as well as a total of four mags. Being that the first one was staggeringly expensive, two grand seems relatively affordable. But that is still a lot of cash and that gun better be freaking fantastic for that amount of money. Then again, the field pistol was one of the smoothest actions I've ever felt in a handgun, so maybe it really will be good. What do you guys think? Does the capability of the 7.5 PSD make you want to save your ducats or are you looking elsewhere for your pew pew toys? Sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Also, if you want to see it tested here on TGC, slam that down in the comment section so they can see it. The struggle bus is doing a little bit of a drive by today. First up, Smith & Wesson is having a substantial recall on their M&P 1522 rifles. Long story short, in certain cases due to a machining defect, when the bolt is going into battery, a round can be set off without the trigger being pulled. Whoops! That's a pretty big oversight and they are recalling rifles made prior to February 1st of 2019. There is a link in the description to find out how to handle that if you are affected. Also on the struggle bus this week is Radian and Stag Arms. 
Let me paint a little picture here for you guys. So on Black Friday 2018, Stag Arms put a charging handle up for sale that looked a lot, a lot like the Radiant Raptor. The price was obscenely cheap, something like 15 bucks, where the normal Raptor goes for upwards of 80 bucks. People asked questions about where these things came from, suspecting that they were a Chinese knockoff. Long story shorter, Radian took Stag to court and on February 28th put out a press release stating that Stag had admitted to their patent infringement and that the two brands were going to settle out of court. A few days later, Stag came out on their social media stating that this was misdirected anger and that another company called Tactical Superiority was to blame for the infringement. Radian then followed up a few days later and made a post firing back at Stag again saying, look, you knew what was going on and you still went forward with it and then offered to publicly release the settlement document. I'll post that on TGC's Instagram if and when I'm able to get a hold of it. The long and short of it is that there's a little bit of drama going on and as far as I can tell, Stag stepped in it and has a lot of work to do proving that they didn't do anything wrong. Whew. Field Sports TV, a hunting and gun-related media outlet based in the UK, recently released the results of a lot of work tracking hunting and gun channels all over the world. Included in that are a bunch of top 10 lists for things like hunting in Europe, hunting in the US, hunting in Australia and Africa, among other categories. I thought it'd be fun for us to explore the gun channel list together. The interesting thing is that the ranking is actually done according to Social Blade rank. Social Blade is a website that tracks views and subscribers and a few other factors and is used by a lot of creators to look at their channel analytics off of YouTube. All right, so the gun channel list. From bottom to top, number 10, Vickers Tactical. Then we have In Range TV, followed by Military Arms Channel, then GY6 Vids, Such. Iraq Veteran, Tau Flatermouse, then Hickok, and then Forgotten Weapons, and at the top, Demolition Ranch. I'm betting that that is not how you expected that list to go, and I agree with you. Things seem to be a little out of sorts. So I went looking at their master list, and it's full of WTFs. First off, they only list 62 different channels. Second, there are multiple channels that have not released content in years on this list, including my old channel, which hasn't had a new video since 2015. There's no reason for my old channel to be on that list, let alone at number 57 ahead of AK Operators Union at number 62. But when I start to think about it, ranking channels by subscriber numbers isn't telling the whole story. Neither is view counts or comments or likes. It's somewhere in the middle of all that. So what I've done is start a poll over in the TGC Nation Facebook group, and I want your opinion. I'm gonna be running the poll until this coming Saturday, and we are gonna find out what the TGC audience thinks is the top 10 gun channels by your votes. Seriously, go check it out. I, I'm excited to see what the results are, and I think it'll be a little bit biased, but it's still gonna be fun. Neomag offers a slick solution to discreetly carrying a spare magazine securely in your pocket. Available in small, medium, and large to hold anything from 380 to 10 mil. Also now available are the extended clip versions which allow you to carry deeper in your pocket or carry your spare mag with an extension. Utilizing strong neodymium magnets, a steel backer, and titanium clips, these things are built to last. To get 10% off your entire order over at theneomag.com, use the code TGC10. And it's time for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over the interwebs. This week, our questions are coming from YouTube. Kyle Vreeland says, how do you support the gun industry if you are of meager means and can't buy new products? Great question. I think the number one thing is to use the tools that you have. If you can't afford to go shooting or use the products you have, then maybe use your voice to show not just the manufacturers that you support them, but also be an advocate for the brands, the products, and the people that you trust. For instance, I can't afford a Holland & Holland rifle because they cost as much as a house, but I will absolutely sit there and watch how they're made and talk about how effing cool they are. Matt Duell or Duell wants to know if the SIG P365 has gotten past the problems and if it will be able to recover from them. As far as I can tell, yeah, they've moved past the issues 
and it seems like the pistol's doing very well in the market. Guys that work in gun shops will be able to confirm or deny that in the comments, but from what I can see, it's doing just fine. Bob Stone says, how do you feel you have impacted the gun community since the start of this channel? I was debating whether or not I should answer this one, but I think it could be fun to reflect a bit. I think we've been able to do some incredible things. Our format has been different from the beginning than most other channels, both in content and the way we do promotions and make money. And that has put us in a different position. I cannot tell you how many people have thanked me, not just for the content that we produce, but covering a brand or a product, even when we aren't positive about it, because they appreciate the honesty and most of the time, even handed approach. I know sometimes it seems like I am just relentlessly crapping on people, but I genuinely do try to be fair. I also think that we've been able to build a relationship with the audience, you guys, that goes deep. I mean it when I say that I am thankful to the audience because you guys are the reason that I matter at all in the gun industry. Although it's impossible to talk to everyone all the time, I think that we have a bond that is really good. I also think that we've done a good job in educating folks both in the industry and on the consumer side with the legal brief. I can't tell you how many legal questions we get on a regular basis, but Adam has done a good job hosting that show and keeping things largely apolitical intentionally. TGC is far from perfect and far from the best out there, but I like to think that we've done a lot of good things over the last three years, and I hope that you guys would agree with that. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. Since you started shooting, what was the most important thing that you've learned? This is going to be interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And hey, if you want your question answered right here on the show, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show, guys. If you disliked it, hit that button, the down vote. Down vote the crap out of it if you didn't like it. If you liked it, and I hope you did, hit the like button, get subscribed, hit the bell, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have an Amazon affiliate store as well as links to purchase cool shirts like this one. And of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. All right, here we go. Round two. It has a competition. It has competition. Competition. <laughs>